So in this troubleshoot, I just want to go over uh, a question that's come up, which is about how we might begin to project multiple blocks or objects onto a singular surface. And I'll go ahead and talk through one way that you can start to do this. So just really quick, I'm leaving off where we left off on the tutorial day last time, but I think I'll just turn the drainage off as well as you can see here, we're doing the slope analysis in this case. So what that slope analysis had done is subdivided our mesh. So we're going to want to turn the slope off because we want to work with a singular mesh for this um, operation. So I've just clicked on simplified mesh. We're going to turn that slope off, right? So now when I click, we have one singular mesh function. And I'm also going to go ahead and turn the buildings off. And so I'm just highlighting all the vegetation. I just did that using the click and drag, but you could also just click on one and say cell layer. And we're just doing cell vegetation in that case. We'll just pull those all above the the surface, or in this case, the mesh that we're looking to project onto. You'll notice these are not all at the same elevation. That's totally fine. The you may have tried that. I'll just show what what a lot of people likely would have tried, which is to project, and then you know this is your your surface or or mesh or whatever that you're looking to project onto, and so. If you've done this, you'll likely have found that it doesn't quite work, right? You're not, especially, I mean, in this case, we're talking about how to project um, a block instance to a mesh or to a surface. And so you'll find this happens. There's a kind of geometry that's extracted from the block, but not the block itself, right? And, and that can be pretty frustrating. The reason that happens, I'm just hitting delete on that. The, the reason that happens is because the block itself is, is not a geometry. So the project function, in essence, is working to project a known geometry to that surface. And, and the reality is that a block is a different kind of logic. It does have geometry within it, but it's, it's really just a kind of proxy. See, they're, they're not actual geometries that exist. They're representations of geometries. So this is duplicated from one block instance that can be found in our block manager tree one so it knows to keep pulling from this tree for all these individual points so that that's really the issue as to why a function like project wouldn't work for us but there there are other ways to do this and and most specifically there is a person that worked at mcneil um i believe and that's pascal golay who created a rhino visual basic script to to allow you to, to basically project blocks onto meshes and surfaces and things. And that was called move project. Now, the thing is when I when I went to to look this up and download it again, so I know I knew I was looking for a move project. So you know I could just type in here. Probably written together. There we go. So there's a lot of different uh, visual basic scripts that in this case Pascal has developed, but Unfortunately, when you go to download, normally this is how you would download it. You go, okay, I want the move project one. You click, and that file is not found, uh, which is too bad. So I'm not too sure why that's not available anymore on the internet here, or if there, there's some sort of other workaround that that I'm missing. But I do have it just on a previous computers. So I emailed it to myself and. It's here in the downloads. I'll be sure to post this in our um, course canvas. And so you'll you'll install it in the same way, but just really quickly, just to show you kind of what this is even. This is the, the script. In case you're just like kind of wondering what that what that function even is. So that's what Pascal had written in close out of that. And the way you're going to install this is 
you're just going to go to your downloads and you have your move project hold down click on it and you're just dragging it into the drawing space and then you can see here in the command bar it says load script script file to load and then it's you know mine's just in my downloads because like i said I, I just emailed it to myself so what that does in essence is it, it creates new commands specifically two new commands and that's move project as well as move project each which is the one we're going to use what we want to do i think just for the purposes of this demo i'm gonna just hit the alt key and i'm just going to duplicate the trees just so there's there's more and then i'm also interested for that matter let me just go to shaded here I'm interested in having a couple float off of the drawing space, at least a couple. Let's see. This will be interesting. You know, there's three that fall right off of the drawing space and one that seems to touch it a little bit still. And then we have just a bunch of other trees. Let me just go over to my vegetation and I'll just turn the mesh off. So that's, these are the trees we're gonna project. This is the mesh. So you can kind of see some are over top of that mesh and some are beyond. So what I'll do is, you know, you can just drag and highlight them all. You can select one and say cell. You can do a lot of things here, right? Like we did cell layer before, but you could say cell color. So it'll just pick everything that's green. Or you could also just right click on your vegetation layer and select objects. So I'm just trying to fold that into this multiple ways you know to just select all and from here what i'd like to do is go ahead and do the move project uh, move project each right so just make sure if it's not working for you it's likely that you've selected move project we have in this case 57 if you look over here 57 tree block instances or, or block instances that represent trees let's say so if I go back over here, move project each, give that a click. So you can see, just follow along kind of up in the command bar, there's 57 block instances added to the selection. So it knows that we're trying to project those and now it says select target object. And that's just gonna be our mesh, right? And then it asks us the block instance projection point. Um, in this case, our setting is the closest point you can do the insertion point or closest point. Closest point's totally fine for us. That just means like it would be the, you know, the the base of this block. And that's that's actually really great for us because, you know, we're trying to place these blocks that represent trees onto a surface and so that would just be the trunk hitting that space. So, we're all good with closest and you can just go ahead and hit enter. Now, it may just think for, for a second, and you'll get this pop-up, and it just says, it looks like at least part of this object misses the target or is already on the target. Now, we know that I placed a bunch of these trees beyond the boundary of our target, right? The target being the mesh. And so I'm just going to hit OK. And it's just going to essentially report on those. So you can see they're getting highlighted in the back. So there's three, and then it, pro it projects those final ones down because I guess they do touch. So there are three trees that missed, and those will remain floating. And interestingly enough, you do see that here, this circle, although the, the trunk or the center point of this tree or block doesn't actually hit the mesh, the um, drip line of the tree in this case does touch it, right? So this is uh, where some of that nuance of the script may come in just for you to consider in terms of what you're getting there. So you might want to hit delete on that. And so there you go. That's that's one way you would project blocks to a surface super quick rather than placing each one individually. The This is also true for if I turn the buildings back on. I'm just turning the trees off. So same thing, cell layer, buildings. You know, these can be floating up here and you can do your move project each. Pick your point. 
So pretty smooth. This is nice for, for the mesh, uh, sloped mesh function too, because it just touches it ever so lightly um, right at, at this point, you know, and then just makes sure that the rest of it is, is sunken in. So there you go. Just a, a really quick, quick way to start to place objects and, you know, in your workflow, conceivably you could be modeling most things up above your mesh from plan and you could then just project it down. But the other thing to consider is, you know, part of this workflow is to, to sort of model from the topography up using the point clouds, not so much for the trees, but certainly for, for your buildings to try and get a little bit more nuance into those. But hopefully that's helpful. Um, I'll be sure to, to just share that, that visual, visual basic script with you and we'll take it from there.